In this lens, we talk, we're looking at Nikon buying red, also Fuji and Leica announcements, and Sony going to the cloud. Stick around. Hello, everybody. Hello, Art. Hey, you doing? Hi, y'all. We're doing uh, Lens with Talk 18 today, and uh, we have a bunch of topics. I want to start with uh, some things that we're currently reviewing before yeah. we go on to some news. So the first thing I want to talk about is something that I think we had in our position for six months now, quite a few months, I think, before IBC last year. Which one? Uh, we're talking about the Exascend. Uh, Exascend uh, Drive, yeah. yeah. It's been... It's, this, uh, it's called the Gecko. All right. It's this uh, small uh, SSD. It's all metal, I think uh, aluminum, with some uh, cooling ribs on this side. Mm -hmm. And the special thing about this, I, I'm, I'll talk about the actual performance in the review, which will be up probably around the time that this is published. I know mm -hmm. I'm still talking to the company about some stuff. But I wanted to mention something else. This has two, this is the only drive that I know of that has two uh, quarter inch 20 threads. Now you may ask, you know, why do you need quarter inch 20 threads on uh, You'd be an surprised. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So no, the, the idea, this actually uh, is shipped with a quick release. Yeah. This one, uh, it's, it's okay. It's kind of big. But it's proprietary, right? It's, it's not proprietary, Arca? yeah. I mean, you can use it for other things, but uh, it has two quarter-inch uh, threads on the back. I would probably do it in a different way. I said it in the review as well. Uh, I would use like a quarter-inch with RE pins, of course. as usual. But regardless, I mean, it, it doesn't twist. The thing is that uh, this is basically designed to work with uh, cameras that can record into SSD. SSD yeah. So it can be like Blackmagic, um, Zcams, I think, can do that. Uh, I think that some Panasonics can do that as well. Yeah, I believe so. Um, do you know if there is one or two Nikons that can also do it? Maybe the I Z9? I can tell you about the Nikon, but... I'm not sure. Yeah. Canon, I think, can't. And Sony... Sony, Sony has prohibited. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's one... I mean... I'm guessing, and this is one of the things uh, I want to talk about here. I think that Sony doesn't or didn't allow it initially. I mean, yeah, it can be something technical, but I don't think that that's the issue. I think that no, initially... If it's possible, it's possible. I mean, it's not a technical thing. No, I mean, every camera company has a different right, software, course, firmware, whatever. Maybe it's, I wouldn't say po impossible, but maybe it's a little bit more difficult for them than other manufacturers for whatever reason. But no, that, that's not the point. I'm thinking that initially they didn't allow this because they wanted to push their memory cards. Mm -hmm. But now it's far less relevant. There's so many memory, like third-party memory, CF Express Type A memory mm -hmm. card manufacturers that, you know, everybody's buying something else. It's not necessarily, you know, they're probably not making that much money out of CF Express Type A cards. Yeah, so there's a lot allowing of allowing SSDs is just, can be a really big push for Sony. And this is, again, the first one that I know that can actually connect to a rig. So in the review, I'll show how this connect to a rig, but with our, we use Sony. So <laughs> yeah. it's just for shows, it doesn't do anything. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it's it's rugged. It doesn't get overly hot. It has five-year warranty, uh, IP67, all sorts of fun things. Uh, so nice it's drive. An, yeah, it's nice. It has a blue light, uh, blue indicator light, which is good because some SSDs don't have indicator lights, so and you don't know if they are working. So that's again, it's nice. But uh, performance-wise, you'll see in the in the review. Watch the review. Yeah, so that's uh, that's this. It, it also comes, I, I took it out of it, with uh, this rubber like protection uh, case. So that's uh, that's that. Uh, this, the two other ones are yours. Uh, so the first one is something that you already uh, published. Published uh, the um, uh, actually both Axun. of them. Yeah, the Axon Top Rig S60 slider. We talked about it, right? We uh, talked about it in the previous when lens. We, when we, we just lens got talk. it, or even before. Yeah. Uh, and then the review is up. Uh, in, basically, in two words, I think it's amazing. Uh, a couple of minor tweaks. What, uh, like what anything. would you change? The one thing I didn't like on it, I think the only thing I didn't like on it, is there's a, a parallax rail 
right? It's 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 like the, the, you have the chassis, it's all metal, right? And the rails metal. That's the construction is great, yeah. really nice. But there's a little like the there's two sides that you have to loosen. There's two thumb screws that you have to loosen. One's on the outside, which is easy. The other one's on the inside, and it's it's one of those little like a spring loaded one where you, because you don't have you can't fit your fingers underneath the chassis so you have to kind of pull, pull it up open it up and then drop it and and loosen right so it can get it's not like you move it around a lot but you would like i mean you from location to location you do need to to reset it so it's just not in the right place if it, it would be a lot better if it was just outside or some kind of a, a central lock thing where it's like like a push button lock you know you push the whole thing releases you 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 find your your um, angle and you, you lock it that would be amazing i we you showed me that that push lock on on something that we have shape shape has this proprietary technology i'm 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 not sure if it's a it can't be replicated in a slightly different way it's probably patented but if it maybe there is a way to do something similar without breaking the patent and i would use it on a million things that i want to create because the, the right. technology is very simple you Amazing. push and then you who, who else had it um that monopod product? the the quick release uh, head uh, it's like the 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 eye footage quick release on monopod but was it the yc onion no the um it's back there anyway we can we can oh. put it the yc the the foot the eye footage quick release has like a it's like a octagon C- shape you're talking about the c star or the one for the monopod no i'm talking about these the, 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 these, oh, the yeah, monopod yeah. Which, quick release right yeah. you can take off the the feet and you can take off the head right we have another um a monopod like like this but it's a different technology where it's a rosette right so basically the the push lock just releases the rosette somehow yeah. right that's all it is that's so the shape it, mechanism exactly so i mean it, i don't know how much of it is patented but it's a great thing and if you had that implemented on like i i talked about that in the full cam review because yeah. we will talk about it in yeah a second. that's coming up they have this this foldable um transformer cage which is great but the locks on it it's like you don't know which way to turn so it would be easier with a push lock. So a push lock technology on this would be awesome where you just push it, lock, uh, adjust it, and, and that's it, right? When you have to do the two sides and then you can't get your fingers in there. And then also like the, because it's um, it's like a one-sided uh, thumb screw, like a lever little thing. So when it sticks out and the carriage comes to the end of it, it bumps into it. So you lose an extra... <laughs> Yeah. five millimeters of uh of travel which is whatever right but you know it's nitpicking of course but the Other thing works that, the it's, thing works it's yeah. it's really so actually did you, you watch the the footage there's a shot where i put a little cup of water on it yeah it, and it, it's it did, just the water smooth, yeah. right what speed was that do you remember that was full speed oh seriously Oh. Well, maybe the one I showed wasn't full speed. I I, I did a few tries, but I did full. the full speed, and it's like it, you know, it's, the water it's smooth. Didn't move. It moves, but it's Not the lot. the camera wouldn't because camera is a lot more yeah. stable plus the stabilization. So it's it's very like it's really dampened. Yeah, it's really easy to use. Just click on off loop whatever. I think it's great. Um, the the app could use some work, yeah. but for video you don't really use the app for like. Well, I think the nice thing about this is that you don't need the app because you have the the control. Thing. Yeah, the controls are like the the thumb, like the the, the uh, speed, speed control, control, amazing because yeah. you can just it's so responsive and like I've never seen that on a different one. I suggested, uh, well, I'll suggest to them. I I didn't write to them yet. Maybe you can uh, do like uh, uh, if you push the this bottom of the of the speed, uh, it can turn into like left and right, and then you can just exactly manually, reverse. If for whatever reason you do want to do it manually, you can ch- like move it, and it will move left or right at the whatever. You can do that through the app, but manual is not as smooth for some reason. When you go, like, you can just hit, that's two arrows, right? So you hit left and right. And when you're going left and let go, it's not dampened. So, but I, I'm sure it's a firmware-ish. Like, you can just yeah. add that in. I think you also mentioned that you would like to see, I mean, the, the small one, there are two versions, uh, 40 centimeters and 60. 
Um, I think that you mentioned that uh, the 60 comes with a case, which is nice, but there is no room for the yeah, head. It's, it's, uh, so if you put like a small head, you don't have any worth. I would just have like a, a nice yeah, pocket next, a on pocket. the outside where you or can make put it a like, little longer. Um, again, take take notes from other people, you know, other companies that are doing it. I think it was again. I it was we right. have so many, Why so many onion? things. One of the other uh, monopods that came that we, that we reviewed came in a case that had like the soft bottom where you can just pull it out and extends so you can just stick a, a head in there yeah so uh, i mean it'll be either yc onion or i footage, footage yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay so that's cool and uh, the second thing uh, that you reviewed recently is a bunch of products by falcom falcom uh, i'm loving it it's they have this also, whole ecosystem uh, the whole thing just works also i'd love to see some tweaks i talked about them in the in the review uh, but minor because it's all like uh, basically um, modular. You can just replace one one part of it. Not we, but like the they would redesign it and just add it, and it would be good. Like for example, there's a a, a camera cage for the FX3, FX30, and the the right side brace that holds the the basically the the right side of the cage is just a little too close to the ca- the battery door, right? You can redesign it to where it's... We have the the Condor Blue uh, cage in here and it has more or less the same issue. I keep... I, 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 for whatever reason, in the way that I have the the camera on there, it has like a place for a quick release inside the cage, right, which yeah. I think this cage um, doesn't. Yeah. Very few cages have, have this. I really like it, but the the door like opening, the battery door opening doesn't work it's annoying i mean it works you can take the handle off and it works but it'd be a lot better if it worked with the handle on right other than that it's just the whole ecosystem is great it's like one thing fits into another it's actually it's three sizes of of uh, quick releases the small one is for like accessories the bigger one is for the like a small tripod and then the very big one is for a whole big rig, right? And you can actually interchange them. Like one will go into another and it becomes a, a bigger one, right? Including the two uh, like really big ones? Like the five, no, the 501 won't, won't fit in there. No, that's the thing. What the, are you talking about? How can they fit? They are, the others are Arca or whatever? Because you can use it. Well, the way it's designed is one plate fits all three. So you can put a small accessory on. Uh, it's like, it's... Usually you Show just me afterwards. I, I, I need to see. Usually that. you just put like the way we do it here. All the um, all the tripods are fitted with the. Uh, we have uh, either RC two or Arca. Right now, and we've been using the one plate that fits them both. Right, basically the plate that's on the bottom of, of this cage fits all three standards that they have. Right, so you can actually, if you have a handle, like I, I use two handles on the sides, right? And if all of a sudden I need to get a, a high shot, I can take this handle off with just a, a little uh, button click and put it on the bottom and it's, it gives me an extension or like a vlogger type handle, right? Or I can put that on a, on a small tripod or I can put that on a big tripod. Yeah. So I think it's just, it's a great way to do things. Yeah. It's not all perfect, and sometimes it's like the but- I always like ecosystems. Oh yeah, so. oh yeah, I'm all for it. And it's like, and you can expand so much. And just looking at these products, I'm like, hey, you can do even more, make more products like this. Like the, the transformer cage is great because you can, you can put. It's a, a cage that you can put basically any camera on, right? Or more. Yeah, or you less. can put it on any camera yeah. or any mirrorless well, size mirrorless, camera yeah. because it's uh, you know. It's a it's a three third. Uh, three quarter cage, half three cage, quarter cage, basically. Yeah. But you can extend it to the side. You can add an accessory here. You can extend it back and use it like a, a stock uh, rifle stock to a little uh, bit for, too short, but yeah, but whatever. Theory, yeah. I mean, yeah. in theory. So there's just different ways you can you can use it as a vlogger handle. You can use it as like a, a top a monitor mount thing. It's it's really and it's great. I mean, it folds down. You can just throw it in the bag and have it. It's it's amazing for the versatility. And you also tested the um, the, the back backpack the back, clamp. Yeah, that's great. It's uh, and it's as simple. It's, it's it works. It's better than the Peak Design. It's better than the Peak Design. The Peak Design, yeah. I really hate the little I know the what thumb they, screws. They loosen up. This one is like you clamp it up. It has an internal fail safe. You clamp it. It just sits there. It has a really neat uh, release button that locks 
So you don't. The most important thing release. about this is that it's secure because if it's not secure, that's, that's the, the thing. yeah. You don't want the, the only camera thing to is fall. they say that it works with Arca plates and it does sort of, but does it work with the Manfrotto Arca hybrid plate that we no, have? No, it's too long. It has to be like the Arca. Arca is the width, right? It can be any length. Yeah. And some the manufacturers make it longer yeah. or shorter, right? So it's a, it's a short. It has to be short so it could lock. If it doesn't, then it's not locked and then for, it defeats me, the purpose. For me, it's a deal breaker because I, I always use those uh, Manfrotto Arca plates, yeah. which are fantastic. But then again, as you said, they don't fit every Arca. So basically, if you were to switch to their plates, they then they are interchangeable with the, Manf with the Arca. But not with the Manfrotto. But not with the Manfrotto. Yeah. So it's, you kind of have to pick which ecosystem you're yeah. in. Right? Okay, but... Yeah, that's uh, you, you should watch the the full review. You there are a lot watch of the review. <laughs> there, are, there are a lot of things there. Okay, so now we can uh, start uh, talking about some news, and we have some very big news. Big with, news. Everybody which was announced about, yesterday. That's right. We are recording this. What's the date? Uh, Today is the seventh. The day after the announcement. <laughs> <laughs> right. The eighth. So, Today is March eighth. Yeah. Okay. So March eighth. So uh, Nikon yesterday announced that they're purchasing a red cinema camera. Yeah, that's that's huge. I I was thinking. I think a lot of people were thinking that the A9 Mark III is going to be like the biggest, uh, like with the global shutter and everything, is going to be like the biggest announcement of the year, uh, or. At least the, the first half of the year or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, no, uh, I think this, this, is, this, is, a, this is a bigger one. And I mean, it came out of the blue. Like, I, I nobody had, I, I talked to some people in the industry, nobody knew anything. It, oh, when there was a the whole lawsuit with Nikon uh, Z9 using raw, compressed raw, and of course, Red sued them like they sue everybody. And they kind of settled, and I'm like, that's funny. How would they do that? I guess they because they settled out <laughs> of court without mentioning exactly what the exactly. the cell so was. Now it makes sense what the so apparently <laughs> the cell was that uh, we will announce later this year that we we're purchasing Red. And now I've read a ton of like comments uh, from people in the industry and and like just general people about what this means and why it happened and everything. So some people are saying, you know, it's just to, you know, acquire the, the whole patent thing. I don't think that that's it. I mean, yeah. It there would be silly for no, it's, on, on it's, their it's, part. But a company like Nikon doesn't do things like that. Yeah. I don't think so. It's, it's, it's much deeper than that. I think that buying a, a leader in their industry. I mean, they're one of the leaders in the cinema market, mm -hmm. uh, together with Ari and, of course, Sony and maybe Canon, but mostly Sony and Ari. Now, the way I see it is this. They probably understood that if they want to continue in the industry in a capacity more than just stills, they need somebody strong in the cinema industry. And obviously it makes sense to them to buy uh, Red because, you know, the whole lawsuit make them, you know, communicate. It's not a nice communication, but it is. So I'm guessing that this is how it happened, basically. They got things moving yeah. and I think it's a really good strategic move for Nikon yeah. because like, as a... From where I'm sitting, it looked like they were lagging behind. The Z9 was an amazing camera, but it's not so that few people lagging so much. I think as they didn't have an actual presence in well, the, that's, in the that, cinema. That's why. Like they were. I mean, the the technology has has uh, advanced so much, and they have not kept up because I mean, one, they don't make cinema lenses. And this will let them will give them. Get, a, right, I mean, I mean, they could have made cinema lenses could've. before, but they didn't really have the. I mean, again, I think this just gives them a big jump forward. Like they, instead of trying to start a new line of lenses and start a new thing, and this just kind of skips the line and and uh, and no, takes they, them they to. They moved a, way. I mean, I'm thinking that it depends on what they do with it, of course, but it gives them a big advantage now. Th there are a few points that I want to mention here. First of all, 
some people are thinking, you know, no, now there will not be a red. It will be no. No, no I don't silly. think so. I don't think. So. I don't see Nikon killing the the red brand anytime soon. It's a very soon. established brand, exactly. and the brand identity or brand recognition rather is is very important. It makes so. us. I would not be surprised if in a year or maybe even before we'll see like red by Nikon. That's that's yeah, that that's fine. Maybe. I'll Honestly, I don't think that it's that important what the brand name is going to be. The the I think the bigger question is is what they're actually going to do with the two product lines. Yeah. Like their high-end uh, like as video aspect of their uh, line because stills doesn't relate to uh, to red and what they will do next with red. Mm -hmm. So, I'm thinking that what we will see is in a sense some sort of trickle down technology from red to nikon cameras and possibly some trickle down from nikon to red like the autofocus or... exactly uh, so and and lenses as you lenses, mentioned yeah lenses is probably one. going to be the biggest thing i would not be surprised if we might even see by the end of the year some sort of an announcement by Nikon. Yeah. We are starting, maybe you will not even see the, the line, but they will say something um, to the extent that there will be a, a Cine lens line by Nikon because they're, they don't have any problem doing that. I would think that a company as big as Nikon has already developed all kinds of technologies. They just haven't announced them or had a way to to sell them. Yeah. So it wouldn't be hard for them to to pull pull for some sure. together. So yeah. I, I I would be interested in what way they will choose. If they will choose like regular cine lenses, manual manual focus cine lenses, maybe with communication, but still manual focus then that's nice, but I wouldn't say that's super interesting. Mm -hmm. If they will come up with lenses which are something like the Samyang, yeah. you know, autofocus with... But Samyang, in my opinion, didn't go the whole way because they're still fly-by-wire. Mm -hmm. So they don't have hard stops. And serious, like, cinematographers will probably not use these sort of lenses uh, on their cameras. I'm thinking that if they can do like a true hybrid lens, sort of like both hard stops and like you, maybe you could di you click something. The the Sony, I don't know if you know, uh, the Sony 90 millimeter has this has a, uh, mechanism where you push the the lens forwards, it, it turns into like a hard stop uh, sort of lens, mm -hmm. and you push it back, and it's a completely autofocus right. lens like fly by wire mm -hmm. maybe they can do something like that i know but uh, it's just an idea but uh, i know what they will do exactly with the uh, with the lenses but we'll have to see i know you know time will tell if this will be like a, a really significant push by nikon or they will continue with some trickle down like they can probably bring in some firmware updates to their z9 z8 uh, cameras based now on the all the like codecs and all the stuff that red has fairly fast but other than that it will probably take time to see any no, so. you know it will take a year or two at least to see like products which brings something significant from one company to the other i'm guessing but we will see so that's the uh, nikon acquiring red thing and now a lot of stock. There are some new cameras and mm -hmm. lenses that were announced in the past few weeks. Uh, the first is, uh, again, I think this was announced yesterday evening, uh, the Leica SL3. Mm -hmm. So this is this is an interesting camera. Have you used or you know, tried the SL line? No. I think I, I had a chance to play with the SL1 at some point, but that was a long time ago. So this one compared to the SL2, which I didn't test, it, it brings some interesting, like both design aspects and actual technical improvements. So the first thing that I don't know if you you looked at the camera, it's it it has this like on off switch which looks like a premium uh, computer uh, on off switch. You push it; it has this I think blue uh, uh, light. Oh, yeah. I hope that it's not too easy to. I think that to turn it off you need to long, long press it or something. Yeah whatever but uh, so it has this it has it's a 60 megapixel sensor 8k 
So mm-hmm. eight, I'm not sure which uh, FPS, uh, at least 24, 25. Uh, it has an IBIS. I'm not sure how much uh, stabilization it gives, but it, it has one. It has better uh, autofocus with phase detection. So I think this is a first for, I'm not sure, but I think it's a first for uh, Leica, mm-hmm. at least in, in the SL line. And it has a new tilt screen, which I think a lot of people wanted in the previous version. Right. Uh, it has some new shutter, which I think in Petapixel, they, they already did a review and they said something that this shutter is not as good as good or fast or whatever as, as the previous one. I know. It's mechanical? I think. Uh, I don't remember, I think. But, uh, oh, another thing which is they didn't really like is that the battery life is not really great. I mean, it's like 240 frames, like SIPA. It's probably more, but, you know, the, the SIPA, uh, like, rating is 240, which is like nothing for... It's uh, like an old school DSLR. Yeah, no, not... I don't know some DSLRs went way way past no, it, but yeah, yeah, but I don't know it's it's it's, I haven't it's seen a those lo- numbers in it's a, a low time. number, and from what I read, the the, the batteries themselves are quite expensive. Mm. Yeah. One thing I did like, and and again, this is something I saw in that review. You should watch it if uh, if you want to uh, consider this camera or just interested. They have this feature which I don't understand why not all companies implement. When you turn the camera from uh, horizontal to vertical, yeah, I found that very interesting. All the icons they don't change positions; they, they just, just change orientation. Yeah. I mean, that's so simple. Yeah. It just makes sense, you know. You turn it, and all the icons rotate. Yeah. Why Sony, <laughs> Canon, something? Yeah. I know. So that's uh, that's the the camera. It's seven grand. Yeah. I mean, by well, when you rotate like, icons, you kind of have to pay the premium, right? Yeah, for sure. No, they have nice. Uh, the interface is really no, nice. No, Leica is Leica. I mean, you can't say nothing. Seven, seven grand for. Uh, I mean, if you're only going for the specs, you know, get an A seven R five or whatever. Yeah. But you know, for if if you want a Leica, seven grand is not that much money. Some people are, are saying again. I read the comments. You know, they're saying you know. There isn't a camera like Leica for preserving the the investment in the camera. From I mean, for people who you know, if you set if you look at it as an investment, as a collectible sure. or something, a collectible or even something that you use, but still you want. No, this, but I mean, like the, you, the, it's the like a Rolex, of the right? Cam- it doesn't lose. It doesn't the, depreciate. The, the depreciate so exactly. Yeah. Any other camera? Yeah, will go down in price. Cameras specifically, yeah. Lens is not so much, but yeah. cameras for sure. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't care about that aspect of, you know, I, I buy a camera for work, so I need to work with it. This is the, the most important thing. But, yeah, so seven grand, that's that's the price. And let's talk about, I'm switching the, the order here because I want to do the cameras first. So uh, Fuji also introduced a new camera which I think a lot of people apparently like. It's quickly becoming a phenomenon, like a, like a collectible also item. Yeah. I, I had a friend just buy one, the, oh, the, pre- really? the previous one, the five. Oh, okay. uh, and he's like, it took, a, it took forever to find it. Isn't it like right now or like a couple of months ago? No, like now, like that's a, a month that's ago a, or something. That's a stupid right. time to buy the camera. Yeah, right before <laughs> it was announced, the new one was announced. He finally found he one it, and, and he bought it and, and the new one came out. But yeah, it's it's becoming, it's not up there. In Let, status. Let's just say what the camera is. So it's the X100 Mark VI. Mark VI, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I remember, you would laugh, but I remember the Mark I. Mm. The Mark I was announced in Photokina, I think it was 2000 and either 10 or 12. Sounds right. Yeah. And I was there. I was, uh, maybe I'll put the, if I I still have the image somewhere, I'll put it mm. on the screen. Yeah. It, it was, I looked at it and the first thing that came to my mind was this is a, like a copy. But I think that in many respects, people like really turn into this, like looked at this camera from like, that time onwards it's, it's not a copy it's just it's it's a thing on its no, own it's it has very good quality and and 
yeah, it might not be as high end as as a Leica, but in many respects, it's a much more affordable and yet very like uh, very capable, capable camera. camera. Yeah, and it does what any good marketing marketing strategy, strategy or, yeah. would, would do right it it has a following it has like there's a fan club fuji, for it. fuji in, in general i think has this yeah, but uh, yeah. but this they this on line it. i think specifically because of the like the retro look and and uh, the compactness it's it's a very small oh, yeah, camera it's, it's an APS-C. uh i don't remember do, do you remember the 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 specs i didn't write them down it's uh ah it's 40 megapixel it has ibis it's $1,600. This new one has Abyss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm talking about the new one. Um, and I think uh, one thing that I read on, on, I don't know, one of the sites, Sony Alpha Rumors or somewhere else, uh, it has like how many half a million orders in China only? Only, yeah. It's crazy. That's nuts. We talked about what's happening in China. So, we t- we, that, yeah, that's the one thing I, I remembered right away because like we, we looked at the statistics of the order of the cameras shipped last year by, by, by C-Pray. And, right? and China rose by how many? It was, it was crazy. Like, the uh, growth was... From 300,000 more cameras. And with this, next year we're going to probably see like another jump. And this is going to put a big jump on the statistic of uh, pocket cameras. Because it's, yeah. it's not it's a non uh, interchangeable lens, lens yeah. camera, so it's yeah it's gonna yeah <laughs> this will probably outsell any any other compact camera on the market, yeah, at least absolutely. large sensor uh, camera yeah for sure, uh, so yeah it's it's a very interesting camera and uh, I don't know maybe at some point we can test it but uh, I would still like to see a short zoom at this lens but maybe they can't in this compact form factor i don't know like i don't i don't remember how what's the the do you remember the angle the the angle of the lens no i would guess it's equivalent like a, to 28 or the, something like that usually the around the older the mark 5 um no this the new one's six right the, the previous one that my friend bought i looked at it it's pretty wide it's like a 24 28 I'm, I'm guess I'm if I remember correctly the original one I think was around 28. I'm not sure what they did since then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't really look, but yeah. Anyway, so that's the the Fujifilm X106. Mm-hmm. Now lenses. Uh, Lawa has some interesting announcements, and uh, I think we talked about their uh, like ultra ultra wide, the 10 millimeter uh, lens. Mm-hmm. A couple of uh, it, it's already released. When when we announced this, when we talked about it, it was I think only in and China, that, yeah. and now it's it's out uh, globally. So uh, they have the n- n- two nanomorph uh, lenses, which I think are in the Indiegogo Kickstarter right now. Indiegogo, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the first one is a 28 to 55. Zoom, uh, yeah. Zoom. Uh, and the second is a 50 to 100. And they're small, compact, na- uh, n- nano anamorphic, basically. Right. Small anamorphic lenses. T2.9. A 1.5 the squeeze uh, ratio, and the thing that really attracted me is not actually the the anamorphic aspect, but the fact that these lenses are parafocal. Yeah, which is really cool. Now you can say, well, a lot of cine zoom lenses are parafocal, but not at yeah, this price. <laughs> exactly. That's that's not the at thing. the size either. Not this this size and not at this price. They're doing amazing things. Yeah, well, yeah. The nanomorph uh, series has been out, right? They've had a few, what, three or four different primes that we looked at and and ABC la- uh, last year, and this is an extension of that of that um, that lineup and some really interesting zooms parafocal is an amazing ability to stick into a Yo, no, it's, it's only like a kilo and a half it's, yeah exactly it's tiny compared to like the big scene lenses oh, for sure zoom zoom uh, scene lenses are usually fairly large and bar focal and at 3k each uh, it's not cheap but it's 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 even if it was just a, a cine zoom lens with par focal capability at this weight without the the anamorphic yeah, exa- plus exactly. That's the, th- the the anamorphic edition is like really surprising because just a cine lens at this uh, at this 
characteristics like this uh, specs would be worth i think close to a three more, three yeah. grand mm -hmm. no i mean from other manufacturers maybe more but from from lawa it could be easily right. three grand but with anamorphic they really packed it in i'm really curious and this came up to me just uh, occurred to me are there any anamorphic autofocus lenses i can't recall any me neither is there something that prevents anamorphic from being used in with all of, I, I know maybe I just you know usually issues, the people that like, usually use them use manual right, but i'm thinking why not and 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 specifically lawa lawa now has autofocus yeah. on the 10 millimeter yeah. so maybe in in the next generation of something of like a anamorphic lenses we will see on a autofocus you know coming in i know we can ask them in if we go to ibc this year hopefully then uh, we can ask them about like autofocus and anamorphic. Are there any like issues that you know are specific to this combination? So uh, yeah, two lenses, uh, T two point nine, three grand, bar focal anamorphic, one point five kilograms. The whole package. the whole package, yeah. So we talked about the Fuji. Let's talk about another lens, really interesting one. Th this specifically interests me. And that's the Sigma 500 millimeter f 5.6. This lens has been on my wish list, on the top of my wish list, actually, for years now. And for whatever reason, Sony didn't come up with one. Neither did Tamron, for whatever reason. And finally, uh, Sigma came up with one. I think I, I talked to the um, CEO of Sigma about this. Wow. That was at least 2016, 2018, uh, during Photokina. We interviewed him. He's a fantastic guy. Uh, and I, I asked him, you know, Nikon has the 500 millimeter uh, 5.6 PF lens. Mm -hmm. I don't know when this was announced. That was a DSLR lens. Now they have the 600, which is also PF. They don't call it PF, but it is. Uh, and it's the same thing for, for the Z mount. But uh, the previous one was the for the DSLRs. So I asked him, you know, why don't you come up with something like that, but for mirrorless cameras, specifically for the E-mount? He didn't say anything, but it took how many years? <laughs> Six, <laughs> uh, yeah, something like that. It took a, lot, a long time, but now there is one. And look, for the, from the reviews, it looks fantastic. No. It's small, it's compact. What can I say? I don't know if I wrote the... No, I didn't write the, the exact weight, but I think it's 1.3, 1.4 kilograms. Yeah, Nothing. it looks pretty compact. It looks a little bit like the, the beginning, the start of the lens has like... Uh, it looks like an extension tube or something, like a, a long, thin, like a completely... Uh, uh, without any texture or anything. Mm -hmm. So it looks like it was extended in the beginning, but other than that, it's quite a compact lens. Mm -hmm. uh, it's light and, and not very long. Um, what can I say about it? I know the autofocus seems to be okay, but I need to test the, the accuracy, you know, on, on a variety of subjects or tracking subjects. Mm -hmm. Now, there are two things that you have to keep in mind about third-party lenses and Sony, especially like telephoto lenses. One, uh, you can shoot over 15 frames per second. Sony caps the on the A1 and the A9 Mark III or whatever, mm. on all fast cameras, basically. So you're limited to 15 frames per second, where in Sony you can do 30, or now with the A9 Mark III you can do 120. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So you're limited to 15 frames per second. And the second thing is that you can't use extenders. Now on this, a 1.4 extender could have been interesting. Yeah. Kind of slow, but still, you know, you would get what, like... 7.1? Yes. Oh, yeah. The, the, you're talking about the, Light, the yeah. aperture. No, I'm talking about the, the focal length. Oh. Um, 500? Yeah. What, like... Six, seven, I don't know. Seven, the, I'll write it on yeah, the screen. But yeah, but the thing is that, yeah, it's only Sony lenses. Now, I'm, I, I'm, we're going to get this for a review. And uh, we'll see how the autofocus works. And it would then be a question for, for me and probably for other users whether or not to buy it or wait for Sony to come up with something similar. Mm -hmm. If it's really good, if the autofocus is like spot on, then I think it's a no-brainer. Yeah, there's a few Sony uh, Sigma lenses, Sony competitors, 
that are very the very 85, close. We're using yeah. for, for my angle. We're using this 85 1.4 uh, Sigma lens, which is That's fantastic. A very close to yeah. I would say this for video, it's fantastic. For stills, it still misses, especially in the studio with moving subjects. It still misses some uh, some shots. The Sony, the Sony 85 is not very good, and there will probably come a, a, a new version later this year, but. Uh, I know. I I think that first party lenses, when it comes to like tracking subjects, are still better than third party lenses, especially on this. Like this do, is like do they a, limit their cameras somehow to not work as well with. I don't know. They need to do some reverse engineering to some degree. So this, I'm guessing that this is the limitation uh, that they have. But I know th this is like for me, this is the perfect bird photography lens. Small light, 500 is fantastic. Yeah, 500, f5.6 5, f5 is not f4, but then you get the, the difference between the price and weight yeah. to an f4 lens yeah. is gigantic. Makes sense. So, yeah. yeah. So, that's the Sigma 500 the f5.6. Oh, with, I didn't mention there is also a 15 millimeter f1.4 fisheye lens. Right. This is a very peculiar lens. Yeah, uh, it's not for me, but maybe we will do. Uh, I have a friend uh, who is interested in this for like doing shooting like wide angle panoramas uh, with one lens instead of like doing the actual panorama mm. and then fixing it in post. I know we'll have to see if we get it and if we he can test it and maybe we can do like a hands-on review sort of thing it's so it's strange there's contrast issues and blurring issues on the sides of a fish like i don't know if you could pull off a, a good panorama with it i uh, tend to agree but i mean instead of if we get it we will see yeah. instead of three or four you do two shots maybe so you can crop the i don't know the 500 is three thousand dollars the 15 millimeter is two thousand or i think that's, that's, a, that's a lot of money it's a peculiar for the, lens like for I, the 500 i i sort of get yeah. it for the 15 millimeter i don't get it it's i just i see very few uses for it yeah i mean especially me with with the issues on the on like on the curves I don't know. I guess it's an effect lens, and for the, and, and who really needs the f one point four just for a really tight close ups where you blur the background? I don't yeah, know. you can't use that on a face unless you want that crazy look. And it's it's a very effecty lens yeah. or whatever. Okay, so that's that. And now let's talk. There are some. Oh, there is another lens. Maybe before we go on to Sony, I have something mm. uh, that will in, might interest you. I don't know, but uh, Panasonic has this uh, sort of all-around lens. It's a twenty-eight to two hundred millimeter f four to f seven point one. Yeah. The... Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's it's an all-around lens. You know, if you if you want a travel lens, it's really small and light. I think it's obviously an L mount, full frame. Uh, it has built in, I, not IBIS, uh, OS. I, they call it OIS. Mm -hmm. So basically, image stabilization or optical image stabilization. It's really light, so 413 13 grams. So yeah, it's really, really small, it's compact. Right? I think that the what picked my interest is, was that it has like three centimeters close up distance, and yeah, the, the magnification crazy. is probably fairly good. I'm not sure if like throughout the entire range, but. At some point. Actually, I noticed that when I was looking at the other lens, which discussed the uh, the nanomorph zoom, they also have a very close like uh, forty centimeters or something like that. I think it was, mm. anamorphic lenses always have issues with close ups for whatever reason. I know it's something optically, uh, but, I but it's not. interesting. I don't know if it's like a, a new development in technology where they're able to, to decrease that decrease the, the minimum focusing but three what is it three centimeters that's what are you talking about panasonic yeah yeah that's, that's crazy super super close yeah i know uh so yeah I, i'm not sure what the price is i put it on the screen but uh if you, you are shooting with l mount and you want an all round it's an option it's 28 it's not 24 so keep this in mind but yeah if you want a small size you know that's that's the price you have to pay uh, so going over to sony and again you, you as a uh, fx 330 you have both now the fx3 mm -hmm. and the 30 two mm -hmm. 30s <laughs> and they have this uh, sony creator cloud upload thing 
where you get like five gigs of uh, storage. free uh, storage for photos and videos. And you can somehow directly upload from the cameras to somewhere. To the cloud. To the, to the so, Sony cloud? So, yeah, when you... Um, when you connect, the, it, it works through the new app. So when you connect the, the camera, the C, to, the C, how that's it's called? Do you remember the, C, the Cine, the, the Sony new app, the, right? The monitor and and uh, record whatever they're calling yeah. it. Sony always has amazing names. <laughs> Easy to remember. Um, you connect the app to the camera. It's actually pretty smart. Like I, oh, you tried it? I've been working with it. No, no, not, not the, app, the, the, the this, upload this feature, feature. I haven't tried yet, but it's, it's it's a smart app because like it actually knows what the camera is doing. Not just it's not a one way communication thing, right? So, like for example, the camera I bought the brand new camera, the FX30, and I uploaded the the or I um, did the upgraded the the firmware, and the app tells me the the camera has been upgraded, right? So it's like it's a it it knows what the camera is doing. So it allows the app to do different things. Like so, when when the camera is connected to the app, and I'm shooting, then it already has like proxies of of the of the. Um, but you, you can view you can view, you can a view proxy them. Yeah, you can actually. In the app? Yeah, really? you, yeah, you can you can view the. It's like a recorder, basically. I'm waiting for for this app to st- support the A1. It's coming yeah. soon, right? So it actually you can. You can save the proxies to your phone, or you can save the, the the proxies or the originals to the cloud from your phone. So your phone needs to be connected to the internet, internet, and basically to the camera. So, but it, the thing I think with this is that you don't need to play with your phone. You can upload from the camera somehow. It, you well, set it up in the app, it's and then it's registered already, so it just does it automatically. If you so set it up, so in theory, what you can shoot, and then it transfers all the files to somewhere but it it transfers what like large the, the original video files or just the, I the think you can set it up to where it's either proxies or the original the original wow the original will be yeah like if you do a 20 gig interview clip then yeah that might take a while but no because for this setup for example let's say that we are doing this um uh, sort of like podcast thing mm-hmm and you want and and you have a, like these two cameras three cameras and you have a computer and let's say that instead of like just recording the the whole footage on the cards you already tell them to yeah. to send it to the to the computer that'd be interesting that's something to check i, I don't know if, it, if it's the just app the cloud the or computer. you can tell it to save it to a computer to a physical location on a computer if the app works on the computer i think you you may be able maybe, to maybe try try it and then uh, exactly. come back to us yeah. in, in a future uh talk that's that's interesting one thing that uh, we talked about yesterday i think or i don't know the, the last time we talked uh is that one thing that is really missing from this app is audio monitoring and audio levels what the hell is wrong with them? I don't know. <laughs> How can you so... do a, a video centric camera app without being able to monitor the audio? It's the same question we asked when we in multiple conversations we had with with, with, with so- Sony. Yeah, it's we like talk- why can't you just do the, the like audio monitoring in 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 the uh, like earbuds or headphones? Wireless. Oh, th- these are it, two things. This is no, like the simplest it, thing ever, you know. Adding right, just it's the two mod- different levels, but it's kind of the same lines. Like, just go with the audio. You're already doing a headphones and and all this audio stuff. Why not? No, but audio is for me is the most important thing because you know, you you can have like sort of crappy image, but if the audio is pristine, you know, people will forgive you. If the audio is crappy, or if you miss the audio completely, which is the worst it's thing, it's unwatchable. Yeah, well, then you have video with like people well, that's moving the thing. Their... If you if your phone is connected to your earbuds and your phone and you're already, uh, it's this. I don't know. I don't. I just don't see what the limitations are. No, I'm not even talking about monitoring. I'm just talking about look being but able would, to see the. If you do the... one, you could do the other. Is the thing. No, not necessarily. Well, if you're already monitoring, then you could also see the levels, basically. 
I mean, that's what I'm saying. No, like no, you no, can just no. go I, like a step further. Uh, oh, sure. Either way, either I way, would you love need. To, I would love to be able to monitor, but monitoring has latency and all sorts of issues. That's and just true. Say, saying, you know, being able to see that there is audio and that it's not peaking. That's that's give me that as a first thing. Then I'll ask for more. Mm. But whatever. So that's the the Sony Creator Cloud upload thing for FX3 and 30. I would like to see it on other cameras. I know. They A1. actually have different plans. There's actually the, the five uh, gig storage is free and you can actually register your camera and get 25 gigs of storage free. Oh, okay. So it's a pretty good deal. Okay. For Sony only. Sony only registered cameras. So you you could use this for a different... But when they said five gigs, is five gigs a month? Five gigs a what? No, I think it's total storage. Ah, it's storage. Storage, yeah. Not uploads. Storage. Hmm. No, because what I would be interested in is not so much storing the videos on the cloud because five gigs is nothing. Yeah, you, you, I'm, you just I'm interested do a backup in, in, and then in, really... in yeah, exactly. To upload the files to the cloud and immediately download them into I don't know if they allow this. Again, play with it, see see, mm. see what works. And so we talked about the the Sony, the Panasonic. Oh, uh, Shimbo or Simbo or sh- I think it's Shimbo because it's Shimbo, SH. Yeah. Uh-huh. Shimbo, uh, I, I I think I've been talking to them. They have this um, um, monitor recorder, mm-hmm. uh, which is a seven inch monitor recorder. Now, I don't remember if we talked about, yeah, I think we talked in lens, in previous lens, we talked about this recorder aspect of, mm-hmm. of uh, monitors. And this one is an SDI plus HDMI in and out. It has dual MPF, uh, but it doesn't have any like USB uh, power, whatever. No. Uh, and it has SD card recording. The thing is that from, I, I, I've, again, I've talked to them and I try to understand, I mean, the recording is just for like proxies and stuff like that. It's not like, it's not an Atomos replacement. Right, right. So I asked them, you know, why? Why not go with, with something? Because Atomos doesn't really have a lot of competition. I think Blackmagic has a recorder yeah. and them, and more or less that's it. Like a, for, for a monitor recorder with like strong recording capabilities mm-hmm. if you really want to record. And their answer was that, you know, it's difficult because of the, if I understood what they, they were saying correctly, because of the, um, probably the... Um, like ProRes requires like uh, registration and, and payment and whatever. There is this AV1 um, protocol. Do, do you know AV1? No. A- AV1, there, is, uh, there are all sorts of codecs, obviously. So AV1 is like a very relatively new co- uh, codec, which I think is more... Um, is smaller and more compressed, but higher quality or same quality, whatever, as ProRes. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what the support at the moment is. I think that uh, Premiere has some issues. I think that DaVinci in the latest uh, version supports it completely. Uh, and I'm not sure how well supported is it is on online. Like uh, on, I think YouTube supports it. I think, I'm not sure. So I know, but I think that if they really wanted to, they can go for that and maybe come up with their own like plugin for Premiere because it's a free, that the whole thing is that it's an open source or free or whatever uh, codec. And, you know, a lot of people see that. it as the future codec for a lot of things, but it's just, you know, starting. So if Chinese, uh, one, them or a different Chinese uh, brand will, decide that they want to do it they can do some you know hire some programmers do a plugin for premiere and maybe some other software that needs a plugin Mm -hmm. and then you know use this and have like a good recorder it's not such a big deal because you just have atomos and people do need recorder recorder is a good thing but Mm -hmm. i know that's that's the thing. So that's the Shimbal 7-inch. Uh, I don't know. Maybe at some point we'll get it and, and test it. Uh, Kessler, uh, we didn't talk too much about Kessler, I think, in no. Landsberg Talks uh, in the past. So they have this, they have all an, an all-around ecosystem for like uh, camera movements. A lot of people knew them in the past for cranes and sliders and all mm-hmm. those uh, 
um, accessories. Now they have a range of uh, robotic head um, motion controls. Motion, yeah, exactly. So they have this uh, Cine Shooter, and now they have the Cine Shooter Plus. And the Plus has all sorts of like additions. So it's like, uh, I think, 40% more uh, power. Uh, so it's you can put larger cameras. It's like it moves faster and stuff like that. Uh, it's a pan tilt head, basically, with controls and, and everything. It has a new UI. And I think that the most important part, this is something that we talked about in other products, it's the Unreal Engine uh, integration. Okay, yeah. yeah, and that, that's very interesting. Uh, you remember we, we saw this uh, feature on the Cinema Motion booth in uh, in IBC last year. That was that was really nice because I don't know we didn't test it ourselves yet, but it's supposed to be a very simple integration. So that's that's kind of cool. This thing, this head is a 3.2K, uh, $3,200 basically. It's not cheap. I mean, it's, I think if you can, no. Is, it's this, about, is it's it about just the head the, or the whole kit? I think it's just the head. I think it's uh, it's about twice as much as the Elochrone. We didn't test the Elochrone, so I can't really compare. Um, but. They have some nice stuff. I've seen some videos. I know that they're used quite a bit in the industry. So uh, I don't know. Maybe at some point we'll talk to them. Holy Land has a, a new uh, product. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's an old new product sort of thing. It's basically it's an extra ear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so last year it tested the Solidcom C1, C1 Pro. Pros. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Amazing yeah. product. Love it. And this one is, but that one is a is a earpiece and a and a head piece. So like your one ear is, is open. I don't remember the the other one has an an ear cup or but without you don't hear anything. Or it just, it no, doesn't it's just even like, hear. It, like it just like a headband. Ah, okay. And it, yeah, I don't remember. So apparently there's, I, I makes sense. I guess like the situations where you would want both ears. Yeah, and that's what they made. They, they, uh, they, uh, yeah, uh, I'm headphones. guessing that is it is user requested uh, request sort of thing. Right. Uh, from what I read, people are saying it, it, that's the only difference, as far as I there's can no tell. There's no different yeah. technology. There's yeah. no. I mean, so it was already same. really good with the uh, yeah. the ENC uh, suppression and and yeah, yeah. wind uh, noise suppression. And all, the connectivity was great. They said that if you record, if you're talking, for example, in 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 trade shows or concerts or stuff like that, which is very, very loud, Mm -hmm. then having two headphones makes sense where you don't need necessarily to like hear the outside that well, but you do need to hear the the other person better. So yeah, you have two options. Choose whatever. I wonder if they're interchangeable though. I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so because you need. I mean, you, if the, it's other, the, the other headphone, it, it it it's 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 a it's a it has a speaker basically inside, right? Yeah, but how would you interchange it? No, I'm saying it's a set of four, right? One is a transmitter, and the other three are receivers. Ooh, Can I yeah. add to that to my solid one, like the previous from, set? A different, yeah, I would guess so. Yeah. I don't see a reason why not. Because there's also a hub where you can yeah. you can add even more. Multiple one, yeah. Right. I'm pretty sure that Solidcom um, are, are interchangeable like with, yeah, with it's, the, it's the same technology, especially if you add like the hub where you can have like a bunch of them. Eight, I think it's up to 18 different headsets. So w- some can be the two year, some can be the one year one. I don't know how much they cost more compared to the original ones. I'll put it on the screen. So for the last one, uh, this is a segment of the industry that we have been looking for, I think, at for some time. Uh, we looked at it, I think, in IBC and even prior to that. And I'm talking about the, I don't know how you call it. It's a power stations, basically, like a battery station, mm-hmm. battery packs uh, for for photography or actually it's for everything but in our case it's for photography or videography and there is a a chinese brand i think it's a chinese brand it's called a black view oscal power max mm-hmm. so it's basically uh indiegogo maybe before that was also a kickstarter project uh, and it's a 300 
3,600 uh, watt uh, battery power stash, station. Yeah. power station. Uh, it has all sorts of interesting features, which are, I think, quite common now, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. So it has like, uh, the surge is really impress- impressive. It's like 7,200. That's, that's a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, it means that for a short period of time, you can really push this, uh, I don't know. For example, if you're shooting with the flashes, we have the big flashback, mm-hmm. uh, it draws a lot of power. So if you have like two or three of them, you can really push them to the limit if you want to. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, I think, 2,400. I think that when I tested the output, it went at peak to over 3,000. So you can use like two of them at the same time with this for yeah. peak power. So that's interesting. Uh, and it has like, uh, the, it draws from the wall max of 2,200 watts uh, AC and from photovoltaic uh, panels like uh, solar panels, 1,600 watts, which I think is, is so it's quite, pretty, it's yeah. quite a lot. Yeah. The one thing that really picked my interest was the price. Yeah. At the Indiegogo, I'm not sure what the actual price is going to be, but at the at the Indiegogo, it was $1,500. It's like $1,700, yeah. and I think it's half price. Um, yeah, so we will see if it will actually, sometimes they're right, and it's not exactly half price, yeah. and there are discounts and whatever, but I remember between fifteen and $1,700, even $1,700. Still really good. Usually, from what I've seen in the past, the price is around a dollar per watt. Yeah. If you remember in IBC, we've seen even ones where the, it was above a dollar per watt. Yeah, but that let's was one, that was one something. Expensive. Yeah, but let's say that one dollar per watt is the normal, the norm in the industry. Getting it at around half a dollar per watt, it's fantastic. Yeah. you know, price per watt, <laughs> whatever. No, it's 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 cool. I'm really waiting for this whole thing to go down because it's still very expensive if you think about it. No. Yeah. I mean, if, if for every like uh professional shooter to have one of these and I think it's it's really essential nowadays. It is. Yeah. Because if you're doing outdoor uh, productions, you know, what out, what other options do you have? Like a generator, it's loud loud noisy, it's annoying oil, you know, it's who wants to deal with that? So, you know, this is a good option, but pricing is still like 1500 has started to become or 1700, whatever. It's starting to become more like okay ish. <laughs> I would like to see them like below a thousand dollars. Oh, yeah, a thousand dollars and you know, whatever 3600 yeah. uh, watts. A even lot of even would 3000 have is, is acceptable. Let's say that w- for what we do, even 20 something will be okay. Although it will probably be a little bit limited because if you want to be outdoors, you want to have like at least, I don't know, three powerful lights. And then you have to remember the whole thing, you know, yeah, it might be able to power your lights, you know, your two, 600 and another 200, 300, whatever, but for how long? Mm -hmm. And if you're outdoors, you don't have a way of charging it except for solar, but solar is slow, so. You know, that's that's not ideal. So that's uh, the Blackview Oscal Paramax 3600. That's uh, that's uh, the last thing that we have, right? Uh, and, uh, of course, don't forget to subscribe. Check out the website. The website. And uh, there are a lot of reviews coming up. The SSD, you're going to come up with some interesting reviews, I think, next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we have a lot of interesting things We've coming. Got stuff coming. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye, y'all. Bye.